Hi, welcome back. It's Lonnie. Today I want to play with napkins and use tea bags. Now I like to rinse my tea bags because I don't know, I just like somewhat grunge but not complete grunge. So that's my preferred method. You can use whatever tea bags you like. Um, because it's fall and I'm making some journals that are going out in fall, I thought I would like to try this um, image with the pumpkin. And I thought we could try making something like, I don't know, tags or pockets. This one's very thin, probably only has two layers. And I'm getting a lot of these ghost prints because I use a lot of napkins. And so I'm wondering how I'm going to use some of these because you can still see a very faint pattern on there. I have this um, freezer paper backing left over so I'm going to use that as a, a work surface. Now this um, napkin backing is very like the pattern shows up quite a lot so what I was thinking I might start with this one, see what happens. So let's see, if I go this way, how much, some of my tea bags are like almost completely clear. I think that might work better for this print. Okay, so I'm going to try that. I'm using the matte gel medium that I made. And I'm just going to stir this. I'm going to add just a little bit of water. I think it gets um, thicker as it sits. And then you have to be careful how you spread it. Hopefully I done hopefully I'm doing this the right order because I saw some people put the um, gel medium on the tea bag not the napkin so I'm just gonna try a couple different things sorry if my brush is in your way there look you can see that that's kind of supposed to be some kind of leaves back there Okay, now I'm going to do another coat with the um, gel, matte gel medium on top. And we'll see if this gives us something pretty. If not, well, then you don't have to try it, do you? And I don't have to do it again. But I have so many tea bags, I wanted to see if I couldn't find something that I liked. Too, I thought if this um, if this works or gives me an image, then I could always back it onto another heavier paper to make um, to make like a tag or a pocket see what happens. I can see something. I don't know if it's going to be enough 
but um, I'm going to just use my heat tail and I'll be right back because I don't want to wait for too long here. Okay, so there is a faint image on there and I've also seen some people sewing through there and I think I might do that because it would definitely add some uh, dimension and then gosh I don't know some that would depends on what background you would put it on might show up best on the white background or if you just wanted to make a pocket <clears throat> excuse me could even sew it onto the freezer paper if you have a lot of backing. Sorry if you can hear the garbage truck out back there. So I like it but I think I might like it better if I used the front part of a napkin. So I'm just going to put this aside. I think what I want to do, I'm not sure if it matters which which way you put it on, but I think the uh, tea bags are going to be a little stronger than the napkin. So what I'm going to do is just tear some napkin. I want that um, border. Unfortunately, the design is right up to the border. I haven't really used these napkins. I don't. I think the design's a little bit big, but you know, when you're at the dollar store and you're throwing stuff in your cart, you just kind of go and see what you can what you you know you buy stuff on spec sometimes at least I do okay so what I'm gonna do is um, put glue on these first So not all tea works the same for the tea bags I found out. My favorite tea to use, to reuse the tea bags is um, Twinings, the pomegranate and raspberry. It's because, um, I don't know, there's a certain way I mean, it's the only Twinings tea that I have that's packaged that way, so it could be all Twinings, but um, I just find that it it's not as fragile as some of the other tea bags I've tried to open. And because I like to rinse them, I also like to open them um, when they're still wet. Okay, so tea bag is not quite close enough. So I'm going to lose part of this pumpkin, but I'm okay with that. Hopefully the leaves will separate nicely into different backings here. Okay. I'm just going to try and work really fast. Don't have a lot of time for filming today because I just got noticed that my husband is coming home early, which is nice. 
but I don't film when he's around, so I'm trying to just do a fast one today. So I hope you guys are doing well. Um, let's see, by the time this airs, it will be the end of September. It's already the end, but next week, I think, is the last week. Okay, don't rip your napkin like I did. I got to talking and forgot how, how sensitive this stuff is. Okay, so I'm going to dry this now, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, I want to see how the, how well this peels off of here. I don't think it's completely dry yet, but... Yeah, it's still tacky. This is similar to putting napkin on something like tracing paper. However, I don't know if it's still, if it's because it's still wet, but it, it has a different texture. I'm going to just dry it and see. I do like that. Now I've got this, um, piece of tea bag on this side that only has the matte gel medium on it, no napkin, and it's got this really cool texture. This is what it sounds like without, and that's what it sounds like with. Of course it would make it stronger. And then the napkin just adds this, I don't know, it feels almost like leather. Huh, that's interesting. I think with this technique, it might be better if I had like certain elements in a napkin, like not a big piece, but maybe like just a small, um, let's see. I could maybe try like a hummingbird. Okay, I'm gonna try something different still. I'm gonna put the gel medium over here and then I'm gonna put the hummingbird and then one more layer and then put the tea bag Just because of the texture it has, I think it would be neat to do like smaller pieces. Okay, I'm gonna dry this. I'll be right back. Okay, interestingly, the way I did it now, it's um, harder to get off because I put that gel medium on the bottom and also the tea bag was starting to blister maybe it has to be burnished down I 
and two. I know I'm impatient with this. If I wasn't filming it, I would just do it and then leave it to dry on its own. But of course I can't do that now. Okay, it's still translucent. You can still see through it. I think it's worth playing around with. I do like it. I just, um, the biggest punch I have is two inches and it's not going to be big enough to get the whole bird on there. So, if I, I don't know. Do like a loose fussy cut or something. This could make nice ephemera because um, the hummingbird itself is very pretty, but the bright blue and the bright colors of the birds um, didn't always fit in with the junk journaling theme if you're especially if you're trying to do something vintagey or neutral colors so this would actually be a nice way to still be able to use the hummingbirds and depending on which side you use it could mute it even more because that side's definitely brighter so if I had, for example, this page and put it on there, that would be cool. Or if I put this, I mean, you could put it on anything. I would make really nice ephemera that way. That's about all the time I have today to play around, but I hope that gave you some ideas and uh, let me know what you end up doing. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.